And I just want to give you a few reasons as to why God wants to bless your finances. I'm going to say it again. Why does God want you to, wants to increase or wants you to increase your finances? Why does God want you to have an increase of finances? I'm going to give you six or seven reasons. And I want to give you a scripture. Go through to 1 Timothy 5, 17. Or don't put it on the screen. Let me read you. 1 Timothy 5, 17 says this. It says, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his rewards. God wants you to have an increase of your finances so that you can bless the spiritual leaders that are over you. Number one. Number two. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter number 10, verse number 19. The Bible says, Money answers all things. So God desires you to have enough money to solve any emergency crisis that arise. He wants you to have enough in savings, enough in investment, that any incident or any emergency that arises, that you're blessed and you can just take care of it. That I'm giving you God's will, God's desire, and God's heart, according to Scripture. Go through to Proverbs 19, verse 17. Proverbs 19, verse 17. Let me read it for you here. It says, He that has pity on the poor lends to the Lord, and, he that, that, uh, and that which he has given, the Lord will repay him again, will pay him again. Meaning that God wants you to have enough money to be able to extend and give to the poor whenever there is a need and I'm going to use this to refute the idea that God doesn't want everybody rich God wants everybody rich the Bible says those who are let the poor say I am rich let the weak say I am strong the power of our confession he is the high priest of our confession meaning the words that comes out of our mouth we become and we receive and it is God's will for you to prosper. It is His will for you to be blessed, to be able to be a blessing to others. If you're one of those people that are saying, I don't believe in first fruits and you come here with a bunch of bananas or uh, 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 oranges or something like that, you know, we're going to send you home with, a, with, that, with that. We're going to office ask you if that can pay your petrol. And uh, now I'm joking. People try to try to spiritualize the Bible or they try to take it out of context because you know uh, have you ever realized people those that have complaints or problems are the ones that never give and the ones that give it's not like they don't have problems they have problems but there's something that has been planted that caused them to move and to grow and to go for that they don't see the problems or they just overcome them are you guys with me? One of the greatest signs of faith, one of the greatest characteristics of faith is a seed, is giving. Because you literally say, God, I trust you with a thing that I need to bring life to me. The substance, susten the substance that brings sustenance to me, I give it to you and I trust you with it. The greatest act of faith is the act of giving. We see this with happening with Abraham. We see God doing what Abraham did. We see Abraham giving up his only begotten son. God giving up his only begotten son as a seed. So go through to Matthew 7, 11. Let me read you Matthew 7, 11. It says, If then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask you? So God desires you to have enough finances so that you can give good and uncommon gifts to your children and to those whom you love. It is the nature and the character of God. If you are with somebody and you feel you just want to bless them and buy them a gift. But how can we be a blessing if you cannot do that? How can you raise up your children if you cannot buy them gifts or blessings? So I'm giving you the reason why God wants you to have an increase of your finances you know in the Old Testament when there was an increase and a surplus of gold and wine and vineyards on an with an individual it means that the blessing of God was upon them in the New Testament or where we are right now when you have a lot of finances it is God's it is a sign that it is God's blessing that is upon you whether you are a believer or an unbeliever he blesses both the rain falls on the just and the unjust. The sun goes down on the just and the unjust. 
financial blessing, financial increase is a sign of God's blessing. God does not move in His glory and does not leave prosperity behind there. This is one of the aspects that many people try to deny because they try to justify their current situation. We're not here to speak down on everyone. There was times, I mean, for years we battled with poverty, but those years that we battled, we sowed every month, gave, 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 sowed, 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 so that eventually a harvest can be built up. And when that harvest begins to flow, do you know, just even as a young person, for you to be beginning to learn on how to give, even though you're still in school, you will live a life that is prosperous. If you are consistent with that, if you're committed in that, and you're challenging God in that in a good way, as the, as the Bible says, test me now in this. So why is another reason why God wants your finances to be increased? Leviticus 27 verse 30 says this. It says, and all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. Meaning that God wants you to have enough finances so that you're able to bring your tithe to the church to the house of the Lord. A lot of people are like, ah, but if I take my tithe, I don't have enough to pay rent, I don't have enough to pay, then your budget is wrong. Because the Bible says this tithe is not even yours, yours to give. It is already belongs to God. That if I keep it, I'm stealing from Him. Will, you rob, will a man rob God? But how have we robbed you, Lord? You have robbed us in tithes, and you have robbed me in tithes and offerings. Tithes and offerings. We rob from God. We steal. The word rob means in broad daylight. We have, it's a stealing is still deceptive. But we saying in broad daylight, I'm keeping what is actually yours. And then people give an offering here and there. And then they say, but I don't, I give, but God doesn't bless me. There are principles and spiritual principles we have to abide by for our life to be blessed. Are you guys with me? So he wants us to have enough so that we can bring our tithe. Do you know only 17% of the church tithes as a good percentage? 17% of any local church are tithers. And that is a high percentage. A normal one is around 13%. Imagine that. And people are like, ah, oh, you know, this pastor doesn't have faith, you know. He can't even build a big church. He, 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 imagine you're getting 13% of your income for your business. Like imagine all the clients that come and buy, it takes stuff from you. They're only 13% only of them are paying. All the others have stolen. They stole the word, they steal the food that you're giving the spiritual food. And then we wonder why there cannot be revival. 17%. Imagine what can happen once that goes to 100%. It never will, of course, but imagine what can happen. The nations would be saved in one day. The Bible says, can a nation not be saved in one day? Shall the Lord not do this? Can a nation not be saved, turned around completely in one day? How shall they hear? How shall they believe unless... They hear. How shall they hear unless somebody is sent to them to preach? How shall somebody go and preach unless they are sent? The Bible says. Okay. Are you guys with me? So it is there to give us tithe. Then we go to Matthew 22 verse 21. The Bible says, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things which are God. God desires you to have enough money so that you can pay your taxes. He, meaning I'm giving you scriptural references to tell you that God wants you to have an increase, a surplus in a lot of finances, that you can be a walking, talking blessing to everyone. Romans 10 verse 15, and how shall they preach except they be sent, as I said now, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good tide, uh, bring glad tidings of good things. God wants you to have enough finances and to be increased in it so that you can give to the work and to the gospel that is being preached beyond the local church, such as a broadcast ministry or a traveling ministry, or if we travel, we go and do crusades or as we do church planting. And the first one that I read, God wants you to have enough so that you can bless those spiritual leaders that are over you, that are laboring in the word, that are, that are uh, the Bible says, that are worthy of double honor. 